But as I was saying, people, have people even read the Bible? I just did the story of the lady who had one cruise of oil. And she was about to go broke. They was about to take her kids from her. And God provided for her right then. What's the old saying a lot of old Christians do? Say, God is an on-time God. He is. What he said, I know what you have need of before you ask of it. You know, we spend our whole life feeling, if I just get out the hole, then I can just sit back and relax. I even say it. Everybody says it sometimes. I just want to have a little extra money in the bank. But if you look at scripture, scripture really lines up with paycheck to paycheck more than my your storehouse being full. You do know that, right? So is he that live up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God? And he said it to his disciples. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, which you shall eat, neither for the body which you shall put on. Hmm. Don't worry about what you're going to eat today. Don't worry about what you're going to put on today. Don't worry about nothing. The life is more than the meat and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens. When I first started making music, that's you know what I call myself, Ray, Herschel Crow. Because when I started hearing about how God feed the ravens, and I was like, man, I like that name. The Crow. Mm. I like the comic book Crow. Like the Crow. Or birds. Consider the ravens. For they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. And God feedeth them. How much more are you better than the fowls? You remember, um, it was a prophecy of how the children of Israel would leave Egypt. You remember? Like they said they're gonna have they're gonna have they're gonna take gold and stuff with them. Prophecy. Now the children of Egypt were slaves. Mm. They didn't have nothing. They worked day to day. You know what I'm saying? They got the little money. I mean, the little whatever food they gave them and provided for them. You know when they got their pockets overflowed? After he sent so many plagues on Pharaoh, Pharaoh was like, give them everything. So out of nowhere, abundance came. They left. With gold and silver and jewels and all this. At a single notice. God knows what you need. And the thing is. Yes he told them to take it. But it was useless in the wilderness. It was useless. That gold and jewels and stuff was useless. It was saved for a point of time. When they wanted to start building the tabernacle of the Lord. And then Moses said. A lot of pastors are going to kill me for this. Aaron came to Moses like hey man. We got more than enough. Tell the people to stop giving. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's in there. I ain't heard that sermon preached yet. You probably ain't never going to hear it preached. <laughs> give more and more. And the Lord shall give to your bosom. Okay, stop misusing the scripture. If he said, I seek not things. He said, seek. Wait, wait, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's keep reading. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor born. Look, they have, they have storehouse nor born. They ain't got no bank account. And God feedeth them. How much more are you better than with the fathers? But the world tells you, hey, you need to get some money, man. You got you might, you, what you going to do about retirement? What you going to do? The Lord will provide. And which of you taking thought can add this? Add to his stature one cubit. Now, what's the old saying everybody talks about? A lot of a lot of preachers manifestation. You can manifest stuff. Yeah, you can if you work at a job and they need to manifest. But, <laughs> but far as you speaking something into existence, you are highly mistaken. Look what he said. And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? Hmm. Where does teaching come from? It's the devil. If you then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take you thought for the rest? Hmm. But they don't say speaking of the divinity, they say thinking. Man, come on, y'all. Y'all know the truth. You can't speak nothing to this. I'm going to speak something to this right now because I'm a child of the most holy. Lord Jesus, 
Give me a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich right now. That's what I got to do. Got to get up there and make it. It ain't speaking nothing. That's like motivational speech. That's what it is. Jedi mind trick. <laughs> Consider the lilies, how they grow. They tall not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you, that Solomon in all his globe is not arrayed like one of these. Look at that little hit right there. For all you flashy preachers out there. Mm. If, God, if then God so clothed the grass, which is the day. Look, now check. Oh, something just dropped in my spirit. He said, when they was in the wilderness, did they sound this get old? Did they clothes wax old for 40 years? They had the same outfit for 40 years. <laughs> you need a lot of clothes. The world is so deceitful. God can make one t-shirt last eternity if he wanted to. But we need more and more. more. The world teaches you more and more. A lot of preachers are teaching you more and more. The prosperity gospel is preaching to you more and more. Now let's watch closely. And seek not ye what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, neither be you of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. <laughs> and your father knows that you have need of these things. He know what you need. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Now let's go back to Jeremiah 11. Once you start lining up with God's plan for your life and God's will for life, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Everything's going to line up. What you need, where you need it, how you need it. Fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Look what he said. Sell that you have and give alms. Provide for yourselves bags which wax not old. Hmm. A treasure in heaven that fell of not. Where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now think about it. Every time you see people talk about how blessed they are, it's always material. I'm so blessed. I got a new house. I'm so blessed. I got a new car. Wow. Blessings. Materialism, do not add. You know what's blessed? A clear and sound mind. You know what's blessed? Lord, you didn't deliver me from my lustful nature. Lord, you didn't stop me from lying so much. Lord, you didn't stop me from coveting my neighbor's wife. Lord, I'm so blessed. You see, a lot of spiritual blessings can't be seen outwardly. But eventually... What God wants for you materialistically will come. But that's not to show how blessed you are. Because there are people who are going to remain poor the rest of their life and be okay. Yeah, people. Let your lawns be girded about with your lights burning. And you yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. When he will return from the wedding. That when he cometh and knocketh that he may open unto him immediately. Blessed old servants, whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching, verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And it shall be, come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so. Blessed are those servants. Now think about if you're spending all your time trying to gather riches. I know some people that it don't matter what time of day it is. They'll work Monday through Sunday. But the thing is, they didn't gather for themselves a lot of earthly and worldly things. And they can't afford to stop working or slow down. Now they got the big house. Now they got to pay for the big house. They got to pay more money. Got to pay a bigger power bill. And all this, you got to think about what they're telling you to do. You know, Gathering for yourself all these riches. Mm -hmm. And one thing about it, let's say you get a 15,000 square foot house. You're going to get older one time. Now you got all these upstairs and all these extra rooms that you got to take care of. You know, you got to use your common sense this world, in this world, man. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also. 
for the son of man coming for the hour when you think not. So you're trying to set up for yourself riches. Yeah, I got to get 401k and God come back. That 401k is useless. Let me give you something else. Let me give you some advice for further notice. All right. You're gathering for yourself riches, earthly riches. You're a millionaire now. Let's say the end of this year, the rapture takes place. And then the, the beast comes in. How are you going to spend your money? Can I ask you a question? How are you going to spend these riches that you didn't set up? When he said the only way you can buy or sell unless you got the mark. You know what a lot of people are going to do? I'm not going to let go of my money. I'm not going to let go of my wealth. I'm going to sell out. I'm going to sell my soul to be able to keep spending. And guess what people who don't get to see the mark are going to happen for them? They're going to have to trust in the Lord. And he will provide for them. Or they're going to die. Because they won't receive the mark. If you're lucky, not lucky, if you're blessed and chosen, you won't have to worry about that. But he said, don't worry about nothing. He said, your heavenly father knows what you have need of before you ask of him. Look, Samson was I just slew a thousand Philistines. He said, Lord, you're going to let me die of thirst? And God clave a spot in the jawbone of the ass and put water in it. And he drunk water. He gave it to him right then. Now you understand the on time, God? Right then. The lady that was going broke and could not feed her family with cornmeal enough for that one day. Elijah came and God blessed it and they ate. Mm. Y'all better know the word. Learn the word. Study the word. Then Peter said to him, Lord, speakest thou this parable to us, or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make rule over his household to give them their portion of meat? And what? Due season? And due season. Did he say every season? Did he say whenever you want it? No. He said in due season he would give them their portion. He said, promotion don't come from man, but from the Lord. In due season, if you're faint not. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him rule over all that is he have. So you got a trial period. But if that servant say to his heart, my Lord, the of his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to be eating and drinking, and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. And it, think about it, he's talking about backsliding a little bit. Like, man, I'm tired of waiting for the Lord. I'm going to go out. Let's put it this way. I'm tired of waiting for God. I'm going to get out there and do it myself. Hmm? And at an hour when he has, is not aware, and will cut him asunder, and will appoint him his portion with the what? Unbelievers. I always use that word. I like that word. But first, I'm like, unbelievers? Why is it called unbelievers and not non-believers? Because everybody by design knows God. And then they unbelieve. Does it make more sense to you now? And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, not that did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Hmm. But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of strife shall be beaten with few things. We said to whom much is given, much is required. The more you read. Now think about all these pastors and preachers and men of God that go against the word of God. Of him shall be required. And for to him men have committed much of him. They will ask the more. I'm come to send fire on the earth. And what if, what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I come to give peace on earth. Here you go. Y'all ready? Hmm. I tell you nay, but rather division. What does that mean? The real from the fake. 
Some people gonna choose God, some people ain't. For from which birth, from his birth, there shall be five and one house divided. Three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother. The mother in law against her daughter in law, and the daughter in law against her mother in law. You can, I ain't adding to the words, you can just, if you say the members, the house divided. Hmm. And he said it to the people. When you see a cloud rise out of the west, straight there you say, there cometh a shower, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, there will be heat, and it cometh to pass. You hypocrites, can you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth? But how is it that you do not discern this time? It's a it's a full moon coming up and people getting nervous. But you can't see none of this that God talking about. Yeah, and why even yourselves judge you not that which is right? When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him. Lest he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart thence till thou hast paid the very first smite. Now what is he saying? Repent. For the kingdom of heaven, it is at hand. And he's telling us how to live. Wait patiently for him. You know, the thing is, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And sometimes we're going to want things that and we've been to hurt to get them. Then we rush and get ourselves in debt. Like, man. Like, take Christmas. People like, like Christmas is the last day of the, the world. I got to make sure I get all this before I leave. You can make sure my kid go in debt for a Christmas holiday. Go in debt for Easter Sunday. Go in debt for 4th of July. Go in debt for everything. Tomorrow's not promised. But God said he has a plan for you. You just got to stick to the master's plan. Stick to the master plan. And in due season, you will get your portion. You ain't got to build your portion up like the world tells you. Your portion will come if you stay obedient and faithful to his words and what he tells you to do and how he tells you to live. There's so many answers in this Bible. You understand? Now think about now think about everything we just talked about now. Now look at a lot of churches and see the hypocrisy. Think about it. The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. That's what he told Abraham. The Lord will provide. And right when he got there ready to put the knife in his son, do not harm the child. I have provided with you a sacrifice. And guess what? He's provided all of us with a sacrifice through the Lord Jesus Christ. Not for us to continue to live in sin. Not for us to continue to be carried away with every wind of doctrine. Not for us to walk in darkness continually. No, he is the light. And remember, you're going to have division. Like the world tells you, you need, without family, you ain't got nothing. Without God, you don't have nothing. With God, you get everything that you need. Family will leave you. Think about it. If you trust in your family and not God, let's say your family loaned you $20. And you paid them back that $20. And then about a month later, they come to you and you done paid all your bills, son. You got $20? No, I don't. Now they made it. Mm -hmm. Well, you ain't got it. You should get to think about it. You can't make stuff appear if you ain't got it. But that's how we live in a world tit for tat. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. And that's how you see how the whole world operates. You remember I did that for you? I need a favor for you. I need a favor. I need, I need a favor too. Favor from the Lord. That's the only favor I need. You know what I'm saying? It's very simple, people. Let me pause and I will continue.